and welcome back we're continuing the series on how to build a coffee table today we're going to do the through dovetails and the blind dovetails on the draw units that sounds good stick around Welcome to The Wood Grafter. I'm Andy Guile and if you're new here, welcome on board. Our mission is to inspire, educate and support you in your journey to becoming a better woodworker. We do that through a whole variety of video tutorials. We do deep dive, really detailed explanations on how to build something, such as this series. But we also do tool tips, tool reviews, we do techniques, news from the industry and just get together and have a jolly old chat. There is a website that accompanies the YouTube channel and on there you'll find even more information. So if you've never seen that, check it out now, www.thewoodcrafter.com. And if you're new here to this channel, subscribe now, leave me a thumbs up, leave me a comment and get in touch. I reply to each and every one. And with that said, let's get cracking. So in the last episode, we got all the material cut down for the drawers. We had an oak front and poplar sides, and we're going to drop a popular base in this, probably in the next episode. Now today I want to do the through dovetails and the blind dovetails that's going to hold our drawer together. And for that we're going to use the Incra system. Now if you're not familiar with the Incra system, it could well be worth your while going to check out the series that I did on the Incra system. And in that series, have a look at how to cut blind dovetails and how to cut through dovetails. That will help you an awful lot to understand what we're doing in this episode. I will go through the high level details of what we're doing, but in those videos you really get the knowledge that you need. This is a drawer that we're building, it's got oak at the front and poplar sides and a poplar base. The oak at the front is 20mm thick and the poplar at the sides and the back is 15mm thick. Now at the back here we're going to use through dovetails and at the front we're going to use blind dovetails and that's a very traditional approach to draw construction. Now going back to my templates, I want to find a template that will allow me to do 15mm stock for a through dovetail and about 20mm stock for a half blind or blind dovetail. On the templates here it gives you some key information and as you can see MDOVH template is for through stock of 11mm, MDOVI template is for a through stock of 15mm as is MDOVJ. So it's one of these two templates I'm going to be using. I've also cut myself two scrap pieces of stock, exactly the same width and exactly the same thickness as the stock I'm going to use on the draw. So it's simply a matter of lining these up on the template to see what I like. So template MDOVI works on stock of 15mm through dovetails and anywhere between 18 and 24mm for half blind dovetails. That looks pretty good. I found the centre point on my stock there. I'm just going to bring this up to see how it looks. The way to read these templates, the white area is the material that's going to be taken away from your stock and therefore the grey area is the material that's going to be left on your stock. So it's simply a matter of lining this up and seeing how it looks and what I'm looking for is some sort of symmetry around these joints and as you can see I'm going to have a nice half pin, this grey area, on either side of that joint and that's exactly what I'm looking for. We'll just check the second one as well because we also had this one here, MDOVJ, that would give me the same stock thickness and you can see that one would also give me quite nice symmetry. It would leave these half pins on here and give me an interesting pattern internally. So either of these is going to be pretty good choice. So do you want this type of design or do you want this type of design? I think I'm going to go for this design. So if I centre my stock on that template, that's going to work pretty well. So I'm looking for MDOVI. And here it is. Here's the template MDOVI. And you can actually see that these templates are full size, which is perfect. So now I can use this to insert that into my table. Excellent. So now we've got the right template set up, the next thing we need to do is to centre the router table. Let's go to the table and have a look at that. Now this is where your scrap stock comes in. And as I say, it's vital that the stock is the same width as the final material on the drawers. And in fact, it's vital that all your stock is exactly the same width for the Incra system to work professionally. Now in our situation, we know that these holes that we created for the drawers are all the same size, give or take a thousandth of a millimetre or so, so we're in good shape. So that's going to allow me to batch out all my draw parts because all the stock is the same. Word of caution, 
if you are building the table and you do find that these holes are different size, don't batch out. Work in sets, build a draw, then set up for the next draw and build the draw. It will take you longer, but you'll be more pleased with the results. If all your stock is exactly the same size, as is our case, go ahead and batch them out because that will give you good results and speed things up. So job one, let's centre the table. I've made a mark on the material at the centre point of this stock and I would just want to use that to eyeball up the centre of the stock the approximate centre of the router bit. This has not got to be 100% accurate but get it as close as you can. So I'm just using the incremental adjuster and I'm going to say about there. Now I just want to set the height of the router bit. This isn't critical at all but I want it less than the thickness of the stock. So I'm going to go for somewhere around about there. I say it's not important, just make sure it's less than thinks of the stock. And that was simply a matter of taking a pass all the way through the stock, turning the stock round, taking a pass again, but then we can eye up whether or not we're in the right place in terms of centre. Let's make that cut. And now you can see the gap on this side is much wider than the gap on this side at the end of that cut. So obviously the fence needs to come in this direction. So it's simply a matter of bringing the fence over until you get a consistent gap on either side of the cutter. Now it's pretty important that you do get this right, so take your time over it and really fuss to make sure that looks in the centre. And I think I'm happy with that there, so I'm going to lock the fence into place. And just to make sure I can always find that, I'm going to use my blue scale to put zero underneath the crosshair. So by bringing this back to zero underneath its top scale, with the zero being under the crosshair, I'll always find that centre point again. So my table is now centred. The next thing I need to work out is how high should this be? Now on the template, it's got this setting here, approximate depth of cut. 15 millimetres. I mean, and no surprise, that's the same as the thickness of the stock, 15 millimetres. So to begin with, I want to set the height of this bit to 15 millimetres. There. So I'm going to come back in with my two pieces of scrap this time, and I'm going to make a test cut. First thing you now want to do is bring the fence in, so that's just covering half of that router bit. Not a critical position, but more or less is good enough. We're then going to take a test cut through here, move the fence back by a set amount, take another cut, and that will give me a dovetail on this end here, and a dovetail socket here. Now again on the information, there's this measurement here, spacing to set depth of cut is 28 millimetres. What that means is we're going to take a cut with half the dovetail bit showing, we're then going to move the fence back by 28 millimetres, and then we use that to set the height of the bit. So we're just going to use the fence and we're just going to clamp these two scrap pieces to this fence and we're going to make the cut. And now with everything clamped into position, everything nice and square, I can go ahead and make the first pass, bring this back, move this back by 28 millimetres and make the second pass and then we can test the fit. Let's do that. Now you can see that gives me these rather nice dovetails. So it's simply a matter of fitting these together. Now you can see that's moving backwards and forwards, so that fit is way too loose. So I want to raise the bit, lower to loosen, heighten to tighten. Now I'm going to try and raise this by this gap here that hopefully you can see. You try and pull the joint apart, that's how much I need to raise this bit by. And that gap's about two and a half millimetres. And now we simply remake that test cut. So I just put a cross on those two pins just to show me I don't want that. And I'm going to make a test cut probably on the other end of the board. Now that is looking pretty good. So that's exactly what I'm looking for. This nice tight fit. It's not loose at all and it went together with, with hand pressure. So that's good. So we've now adjusted this bit to the right height. 
Now the next thing that we need to do is to bring the stock down to the appropriate thickness. If you remember when we milled this, we left it oversized. This is about 16 millimeters thick and we were looking for 15 millimeters. The actual thickness we need is now dictated by the height of this router bit. Okay, so I want to just thickness this down a little bit and for that we'll go back to the planar jointer. Now I know that my planar jointer is now set up so I can run all of this stock through that with the exception of the front pieces that stay at the 20 millimeters. So it's just the backs and the sides that we're going to bring down to size. Do not bring the front one down otherwise your front of the drawer will also have through dovetails and that's probably not what you want. So the scrap pieces their job is pretty much over in terms of setting things up. I can now just use the capex to make a quick cut across here to take out these dovetails and then these become backing boards to prevent tear out on the final joint. Next job, bring these down to size. Now I'm going to cut the tails first, I just find it easier on the income system to do that. On the template there's a suggested centre cut which is 8A, which is this piece here on the template. So if I bring up the approximate centre of my stock to that 8A, I'm looking for the template that's going to cut off these corners because this wants to be the tailboard because the sides are always a tailboard on a drawer. And as you can see, that's going to cut out these two white areas. I'm just trying to hold this to the camera so you can visualise it for yourselves. You can see it's going to cut the white piece out here, leaving these grey parts, and that's going to give me the tails on the end of my board. So I therefore know that it's template A that I need. Well, if you look at template B, or the B cuts on the board, again centred around roughly 8A, you can see that's going to leave a half pin on the end of this board. So therefore that will be cutting the pin joints. So we want tail joints, so we're going to template A. So we'll go over to the router table and we'll cut all these. So the first thing we want to do is make a scoring cut on the end of the board and that just defines the shoulder. If you just go directly in to make the first cut, taking all of that meat, it's quite a lot of meat to take out and there's a good chance you're going to tear out the edge here and that will show on your joinery. So we're going to set this up for a scoring cut. Bring your fence in, use a straight edge to just make sure that's flush and then I'm just going to back off the fence by about a millimetre. About there's good enough. Now I'll just make a mark on the scale at the back so I can just always find that scoring cut again. Now when I bring my stock over it will define the shoulder for me and then I can go ahead and make the cuts. I'm going to use a backer board this time because I don't want any tear out at all on my joint. Once I've made the scoring cut I'll then take the fence back stopping at each A increment and that will make the tails on this board. Once we're all the way across, we turn the board over and we repeat. Let's do that. And what we end up with is this nice set of tails on the board. Turn it over, do the next set. So that's all the tail boards now cut or looking pretty good and everything's looking exactly the same and lined up. I've got zero tear out so that's worked, worked really really well so I'm pleased with that. So now I want to turn my attention to the pin boards and we'll start by looking at the backs. Now the cut starts in the same way in that we're going to hold these vertically in the jig and then make what looks like through dovetails and then we come back and we change the shape of those and we'll look at that as the next step. So first job let's make the socket cuts on these boards. So I've got this set to the first B position, I'll make the first cut, we'll move back to the next B position and so on till we cut across the board. Now what we end up with of course is a series of sockets, but you can clearly see that those sockets are not going to go together, so there's some more work to do on the socket board, onto the pins. But before we do that, I'll just cut the next two and then we'll look at the next step. Now, I want to point out that I've actually made a mistake here. It's a mistake we can recover from. Remember when we centred that table, look at that joint. Can you see that this pin here is much wider than this pin here? So somewhere along the lines when I was configuring the table and setting things up, I must have moved one of our gauges. And that's given me a consistently inconsistent cut in that it's not symmetric. Now that's done exactly the same on all of these, everything's offset, so if you look at the dovetails on this one, this shoulder here is narrower. 
So everything is consistently inconsistent. So we now need to allow for that in the next step. It'd be a lot easier if we hadn't have made that error, but while we have made that error, let's work with it. We know that the shape of these sockets is wrong. There's no way that that's going to fit as an overall joint. And you can see the geometry square at the top, and it needs to be the same shape as our dovetails. Now the way that the Inco system deals with that is we now make a cut with this flat on the table and then that gives us that geometry that we're looking for through that joint. Now again we use the B setting so if I set up my fence for that B setting now if I put the same reference edge to the fence that's going to give me the right position but when I come through to the other end, I've got to turn this board end for end. And at that point, that joint is going to be clearly out. So I'm going to have to do something I never ever like doing and come in from this side of the cut to finish off this joint. And that's all because I didn't have this thing centered well enough. So we're going to go ahead and make the first cut on, on the end of all these boards. And then I'm going to reset and we're going to come in from this end. That way everything's going to line up and we'll recover the problem. But it wasn't a very, very good thing to have done, so we have made a bit of a mistake. Now when we make this cut, what we're basically doing, we're taking the shape of the router bit and we're cutting it into that profile. So it's important that we don't cut too deep, otherwise it's going to show up on this shoulder here, on the joint, and that's not what we need. So we now need to set ourselves a little stop block, so we can line this up so the cut looks pretty good. And normally you would come in with the Incra fence here and put that into position. The problem is that this blade is going to actually protrude ever so slightly past this joint and that's going to bang into the aluminium fence, which is not something I want. So I'm just going to come in with a stop block. Line that up so it's roughly at the edge of that shoulder about there, bring the stop block in and clamp it into position. So I'm going to come through now and just make that test cut right across this board and then we'll test it for fit and we'll tune if required. Now be very very careful, this is a very very fragile edge now, so you want to make sure that you've got a firm grip on the board otherwise this is going to snatch and if it snatches it's going to damage this edge. So be very very careful with this, slowly in, slowly out. I'm just doing a light test fit now. You can see the joints go together beautifully. It's going to be really nice and tight. But can you see here, 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 and here, there's a small triangle of wood that's just keeping that joint apart. The geometry looks good. It even looks nice and tight, but we've just got that small piece of material. And that's one of those things on the Incra system. You've now got to come in and just clean that up with a chisel but the depth looks pretty good to me so I'm not unhappy with that Ooh, yeah, at all so now it's just a matter of taking a chisel and just running it down maintaining that same profile that you've just made and just cleaning that out to the bottom of the joint but that's looking really really quite nice I'm quite pleased with that it's a nice joint it goes together really really well so before we get to the chisel work, I'm now just going to do the other three edges while I've got the table set up. Remember, I'm not going to do this end because the geometry is going to be wrong and we need to allow for that mistake that I've made. But we can do one end of all of these. Excellent. So that's all those ends now cut. Now to salvage the mistake that we made, because this was not centred, I now need to do exactly the same thing coming in from this side of the router table. Now as I do this, I know that the router is going to try and flick my wood away from the fence. When you're cutting in this direction, it pulls you into the fence and gives you a very, very firm grip. So I'm going to have to allow for that by really making sure I've got pressure at this end of the board when I come into the cut. Now most of the waste has already been taken out, so it shouldn't be that bad, but we'll still be careful. I've got the face marked up, it's going to be the outside of the box, and I'm working on this reference edge. The only difference is I'm coming in from this direction.
and now we just need to come in and clean up these edges this will be too back make sure there's no debris in there So there you go, you can see what that's going to look like. Nice, tight joint. So I'll clean all of these up and then we'll come back together and we'll look at the blind dovetail. So that's everything now cleaned up and I've just dry assembled each of these units and now I want to turn my attention to the fronts. Obviously the fronts are going to be oak and they're going to be blind dovetails, i.e. they don't go all the way through, they're going to stop about five millimeters down. Now the instructions tell us that this needs to be an 8mm rebate cut through the back of these. Now we've not done that yet because while we had the, the router table set up for the uh, tails, we went ahead and cut these tails. But what we now need to do is to put an 8mm rebate through here. Now when it's talking about 8mm, it's talking about the distance between the outside of the cut and the fence. Now we know that we've already got a scoring cut set up that's one millimetres from the fence. So if I was to bring my fence back to seven millimetres on my scale, that distance from there to there is eight millimetres. And that's the cut that we need to make on each of our pieces. So I've marked an F, so I know that that's the the front and we know that we're cutting the part without any markings on it so it's a simple matter of cutting this across here like so however what I don't want to do is to take this cut all in one pass because that's going to give me tear out on the inside of every one of these joints so I'm going to come in and do a scoring pass of one millimeter and then I'll slowly creep up on the end eight millimeter cut and that's what we end up with and in the back here you can see we've got a rebate cut nicely in there. So the final job is to now create the sockets in the front. All I've done is I've made myself a stop block and I've set the depth of cut to be halfway through that router bit. And I've just gone through and made a series of cuts across that board. Now I know that's not going to fit and that's okay, but what I do want to do is now just gently knot this joint together till it seats into those holes and you can start to see how that joint's going to work but what I'm interested in is the thickness of that stock there now that stock is five millimeters five millimeters yeah pretty consistently five millimeters all the way through so that's telling me that this stop block needs to go back five millimeters in that direction so I'm going to make a mark here on my fence so I know exactly where that sits today and I can make a second mark five millimeters in and I can position my stop at that point okay and that's what I'm looking for that's a nice joint everything lines up done nice and square that will glue together pretty well. So with that depth now set, I can go and cut the joints on the other fronts. And there we go, we now have the basics of a draw. We've got these nice blind dovetails at the front, these through dovetails at the back, and this is draw B2, and that should fit into there nicely, and look at that. It does. 